Hello and welcome to Fatherhood in Focus. My name is Phyllis Baba. Um, excuse the lockdown look. You know, Baba shops are still closed. So, <laughs> anyway, story time. I know you like stories. So today, I want to talk to you about how I ended up in the United Kingdom through the British Army. It all started in 2002. Yes, 2002 when I finished um, Polytechnic, where I had my HND in automobile engineering. Yes. I know a bit about cars. <laughs> you know, in Ghana, or same as everywhere else, like finding a job is not easy after your education. So for me, I wanted to join the Ghana Armed Forces. And you know, to join the Ghana Armed Forces, it's not easy. You know, the training, the recruitment process is actually not as I expected. It's actually hard. The requirements, especially majority of it, you have to be physically fit and um they stress on that it has to you have to be physically fit and for me i'm not sure i fell into that category i mean not that i wasn't fit but recruitment process requires that you have to be like some sort of fit but i still wanted to and to get into the ghana army you have to go through the process if not, you have to go through someone that is already in the army and know somebody that knows somebody that can help you. And to be honest with you, I tried all that and it was difficult. And uh, the process, there's a place they call the Elwak Stadium in Accra. Um, I went there one time and it was the recruitment process. I kind of stood afar and watched how they do it. And you had to carry a log, this kind of a, a big heavy log and then run and then you get these people, uh, soldiers shouting at you and then beating you here and there. I stood afar and said, there's no way I'm going to do that. No, there's no way. So I kind of gave up hope. Few months passed, one of my very good friends, he received a letter uh, from one of his aunties in the UK um, and that was an application for him to join the British Army. So then I was like, oh, can you really join the British Army in Ghana? So I started doing my research and I realized that Ghana is actually among the Commonwealth countries. And in the British Army, if you are part of the Commonwealth countries, you can actually apply for an enlistment into the British Army. If you live in any of the Commonwealth countries, you can apply to join the British Army. So I started doing my research. And then during at that time, this is valid for the time that um, I was doing my research. But for you to be able to enlist into the British Army, there are some requirements that you have to fulfill. And one of it, the very first one was to be able to speak fluent English. Um, the second one is you should be 18 years plus. Yeah, 18 years and over. And the third one, um, you should provide a certificate of um, national service liability. So it's basically saying that you have no liability to your country. You know, most countries, when you finish university, when you finish school, you have to do a national service. And if you don't, you are not allowed to find a job. So um, in some countries, they actually kind of, we have to join the army to do your national service. So for me, I hadn't done my national service yet. And this is 2002, but I still applied anyway. <laughs> you never know. So I just did. So um, I actually applied and then I was rejected because um, I had to do my national service. I had just finished uh, uh, um, the tertiary education then. So I had to do the national. So I had to wait one year and then uh, do the national service in order for me to get the uh, national service liability certificate so i did that and then i sent it to the british army and once again they say oh it's already been a year so you have to reapply all over again so <laughs> so yes um i had to apply again and then I told a few people, I mean, I wanted to know if this really works. So I asked a few people around me, my friends, and they were like, oh, oh, this one, we've done it so many times. I know they know a lot of people that have done it. It doesn't work. So I suggest kind of, um, you know, forget about it and find something else to do. As I said, 
uh, I didn't know how possible it was, but I was giving it a go anyway. So, um, and I realized also that I fall within the requirements. One other requirement was you should have permission or be able to secure a visa for yourself in order to travel for the recruitment selection. So through my correspondent, one time um, I received one letter that says, um, I should take that letter to the uh, Ghana, uh, British consulate in Ghana uh, for an interview. So I was like, oh, this is actually working. So um, I gathered everything. One thing that I am forgetting is um, the requirement, you have to be medically fit. So you have to provide a, a letter from the doctor um, to say that you are fit. And all those kind of uh, materials, you have to add it and then send it to the consulate. So it was a Friday, actually, that I went. My interview was due. This was in November 2000 and November 2002. Yes. So I applied. I, I went to the consulate and then um, the person, the, cons the consular, um, the interview was actually a counter in counter service so yeah i went i went there and then um the first thing that the consul uh, the consulate or the consular asked me was um do you need uh, a translator mind you this is tricky because one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, requirement is for you to be able to speak fluent uh, english fluently so if you say you need if you tell them you need a translator that's a total disqualification so i was like no 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 i'm fine um i have your documents here and you want to join the british army and i was like yes and he goes why don't you don't you want to join the ghana army i said to him well i have tried so many times i have uh done my best i've tried my best but it's, it seems unsuccessful and he goes oh okay i can help you to join the ghana army um how about that and i was like I will be very happy. <laughs> I really want to join the Ghana Army. And he was like, okay, I can help you. I said, then we can start. And he goes, um, in the British Army or in the Army in general, after captain, that was one of his questions, after captain, what's the next rank? And I told him, I have no idea. I just love the Army but um everything that comes with it everything that comes with it i need to learn so if i should tell you after captain uh, the next rank is copra i am totally lying so i said to him i have no idea i don't know mind you i had traveled from uh, a, a town in the eastern region of ghana akutia to accra which is the the capital city of ghana and then i went early in the morning but um the consulate, anytime you go there, there's a whole long queue there. So I went there very early in the morning. And then once you enter the consulate, there's no way you can come out to even get food or anything there. And they are not selling any food in there. So what happens is once you get in there, if you haven't had your interview, there's no way you can come out. And for me, I was there around, let's say, nine in the morning and that's at three o'clock i was still inside and i had not eaten so my face looked like a bit sick i looked a bit sick so when the interview started he asked me are you okay i said yes he said you look sick and i said to him no i'm not i'm not sick i just i haven't eaten i was here like nine o'clock in the morning so i haven't eaten and then he said to me um okay um there's water here so he actually uh gave me some water and then we carried on with the interview now as for the questions he, he asked a lot of questions which i've forgotten but for me i was genuine in everything that he asked me and then this was a friday and he said leave your passport here leave your passport and everything here and come back on monday for your passport so i didn't know whether he has granted me the the the, the visa or not so I wasn't sure what he was going to do. So he said, come back on Monday for your passport. So what is going on here? So I went, I actually didn't go home to Akutia. I went to my auntie in Accra and then stayed there. And then the, uh, on the Monday, I came back and then um, they handed me the passport and... 
I, to, to be honest with you, I didn't know what visa looks like. And they gave me the passport. So I asked him what is happening. What is the next um, step? And he goes, oh, um, the, the, everything is in your passport. So I went out, I went out of the, um, the consulate and then there were some guys waiting outside. And then one guy goes, oh, have you got it? Have you got it? And I was like, what have I got? And he goes, um, check your passport. Have you got it? So he took my passport and actually opened where the visa is. And I was like, oh, he goes, my brother, you are going, you are going. So that is the actual time that I realized that I've actually gotten a visa. See, I was so bereft. I didn't know anything. I mean, I had not worked in Ghana before. I had just come out of school and I had no life experience. I had nothing. So I was actually like, Oh, thank God, this is actually happening. I didn't know what to do. So there and then I just took a car home and then broke the news to my parents that, oh, I'm going, I'm going to England. And But then also um, what happens is one of the requirements was you need to have a sponsorship, um, someone in the UK that will sponsor you. The sponsor, the, the the person that will sponsor you doesn't. It's not monetary. It's like they just have to provide you with an address that you come to when you get to the UK. So in 2003, well, I spent Christmas in Ghana, and in 2003, I think it was on the 18th, I I I traveled to the UK. So when the time came, I went to the recruitment office in England, and um. Everything that I had done in Ghana, the medicals, the everything, they had to scrap it and then start all over again. So at the recruitment center, they gave me a date to uh, go. Yeah, they gave me a, a date to go to um, Pebright where they do the selection. On the day that they gave me, um, <laughs> you, oh God, <laughs> on the date, on the particular date that I was supposed to go for the um the recruitment there is something called boil a boil is you get some some um lump on both armpits so i couldn't put my hands down like that so i, I had basically had to walk like this all the time so i was working like uh, the way the chiefs walk in in <laughs> in ghana so i i still went anyway and then they were like, what's wrong with you? And I said, oh, um, I have, I have uh, something here. I, I don't know what it is. I knew what it was, but I just told them I don't know what it is. And they said, okay, um, there is a, a, a medical center here. Just go there and then they, they should check it for you. And God being so good, I went to the, to the medical center and they said, um, they, cause they knew that I had come from Ghana to join the British army. They didn't kind of, uh, disqualify me. All they said was go home and they gave me, they actually paid me to go home and come back after two weeks. And then they gave me some medication. So after two weeks, everything was gone, but I wasn't fully fit enough to do the selection and then in the selection you have to do like um there's a whole lot that you have to do some physical activities that you have to do and um there's uh, a requirement you have to run you have to lift and then lift some things and then up and down um, you have to do some team works and stuff so um i was desperate even though i wasn't fit enough i was desperate to pass and to be honest with you it was all I think this was a miracle. It was all God's doing because uh, I'm not sure I even passed, but if they didn't give me the results anyway, but uh, they said to me, um, congratulations, you have been enlisted. Um, your training starts, so, so, and so, and so, and so. I was like, wow. Fast forward, um, I went to the training in Pearbright for three months. And that is the military training. And then after that, you do a trade training. The trade training is um, is what you actually do in the uh, in the army. So in the British Army, um, there are so many trades. So there's uh, if you want to be a nurse, if you want to be a, a chef, you want to be a supply specialist, and so basically there's a whole lot in there that you have to um, you have to choose, and then 
kind of a, a major. So I also went for training for another, I think that is four months. So after my training, I was posted to my unit. And to be honest with you, I wasn't, I wasn't lucky at all. The unit that I was posted to, um, once I got there, they were getting prepared to go to Iraq. That is when the Iraq, Iraq war was still on. So they were getting ready to go to Iraq. And I was like, wow, I really wanted this, but <laughs> I didn't know how it was, this was going to. So as soon as I got to the um, unit, they started preparing me to go to war. My God, you know, but to be honest with you, I wasn't scared because it was what I wanted to do, you know, because I, when I was in Ghana, before I joined the army, I was always kind of going on the internet and then checking what's going on with the British army. So in some way, I knew what was going on, but I didn't know there and then once I got in there, uh, I was going to go away to the war. So yes, straight away when I got there, they started preparing me to go to war. And, you know, this was hectic. So I was um, posted to a four regiment in Oxfordshire. And then, um, yes, I was with the Royal Logistics. Yes, when I got to my unit, they were getting ready. I think they had like six months left before they go to Iraq. So I was like, seriously? So, yes, I joined the unit and then um, we deployed to Iraq and I was in Iraq for like six months. Yes, I was in Iraq for six months and then that is another story, whatever happened there, but um, I don't think I'm even supposed to say whatever went on there, but I'm sure you knew when the war, war was um, going on in Iraq, uh, you, you were hearing everything on radio. Um, It's not as bad as you hear it on radio i think they exaggerate a little bit more on the news and radio but when you are actually there i'm not saying it's not dangerous it was chaos but um what you hear here is i think kind of uh, what you hear on telly and radio is a bit kind of scaremongering but yes um i saw what i whatever i saw is here and i, I just have to keep it to myself um i came back to the uk after the tour which is the, the deployment. And then I spent three months in, in the UK and then we were deployed again to Afghanistan. So from Iraq to Afghanistan. I bet many of you didn't know I was in the army. Yes, I was there. I was deployed to Iraq, Afghanistan. I did a bit in uh, Germany. So I've been all over the place uh, before I left the army. I mean, growing up, my first job, the army was my first job. That's where I received my first paycheck. I signed out, I think, after close to five years of um, working in the army. Um, I wanted to do other things. So one of the things that I liked about the British army is that um, they teach you to be very responsible, very disciplined, very selfless human being. So there's a whole lot that goes on. You get taught a whole lot of stuff. And also you get your driver's license. You get a place to live. Um, there's a whole lot actually. And if you ask me, do I miss it? Yes, I still miss it. But the reason why I left was um, promotion. Maybe uh, promotion was a bit slow for me. I mean, I, I, I did Iraq, I did Af Afghanistan, and for after five years, um, promotion, you know, I was there and these kids from wherever they come and then they just get promotion. Not that I wasn't doing well, I was doing everything that I was supposed to do. And uh, British Army, um, one of the uh, um, uh, uh, promotions comes by merit. So for me, I, I realized that I wasn't going anywhere uh, with that, I mean, how long do I have to do it before I get promoted? And then also I wanted to kind of uh, do some self-development as in I wanted to get education, do the things that I wanted to do because in the British Army they say, oh, you get 
you can go to the university, you can go to school, you can do whatever you want. But the courses that you get offered are the courses that will kind of, um, it's military related. It's not courses that will, they can help you in the, uh, um, in the civilian street, but it's more geared towards military and it's not what I wanted. And I wanted to get a degree for myself, you know. Last thing was, oh, I wanted to get married. I am a, f a family man. I like to be with my wife and children. So I don't like to be leaving my family and then going on posting and that. So one of the main reasons why I left was to settle, get married and then be with my family. So that's the main reason why I left and then got uh, my education. That is why I went back to uni. All I'm trying to say is if you have something that you want to do, um, don't listen to what people say. I mean, look at where I was coming from. I was coming from um, a place where um, a lot of people have tried to join the army, uh, applied in Ghana, and then I asked them, and they said, "Oh, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't try." And they know a lot of people that have tried, but what uh, uh, what works for me may not work for you. But you just have to give it a go. The fact that people are doing it is not working for them doesn't mean that if you do it, it will not work for you. Always go with your guts. Do it with a positive mind and pray to God that the, uh, God gives you directions and then always follow up with whatever you're doing. If you listen to what people will say, people are saying, you will never get anywhere. So um, how I ended up in the UK is like, it's not like I came to the UK and then I joined the army. I went straight from Ghana. They got me here to the United Kingdom. And then within a few months, a month or two, I was in the army, you know, and I really enjoyed myself there. Uh, right now, I'm still part of the army because I'm in the reserves. So what happens is um, when you leave the army, you are not like totally uh, gone. If you want to join, you just have to do your research, find out. Because um, one thing that I can tell you for now that I think is still valid is you should be able to secure your own visa. Um, second is... Um, Second, should be should be able to speak fluent English. You have to be medically fit and you have to be among the uh, Commonwealth countries. If you find this video interesting or if you find any value in it, why don't you um, just subscribe, like, and then share. Also hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know whenever I um, upload a video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again next week.